Look where he brought me from. Oh, look where he brought me from. Well, he brought me out of darkness into the marvelous light. Look where he brought me from. Oh, look where he brought me from. Oh, look where he brought me from. Well, he brought me out of darkness into the marvelous light. Look where he brought me from. Oh, he brought me from a mighty long way. Well, he brought me from a mighty long way. Yes, he brought me out of darkness into the marvelous light. Look where he brought me from. Oh, you don't know how glad I am. Yes, you don't know how glad I am. Oh, he brought me out of darkness into the marvelous light. Look where he brought me from. Oh, look where he brought me from. Oh, look where my God brought me from, brought me from. Yes, he brought me out of darkness into the marvelous light. Look where he brought me from. Amen. 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 This is your obedient servant, Reverend George Latimer Knight. Oh, I'm thanking God for that wonderful song that I learned as a child over on 2281 Pier Street, the old headquarters of the UHSC. Oh, those days will forever live in my heart and mind. Look where he brought me from. He brought me out of darkness into this marvelous light. Look where he brought me from. You don't know how glad I am. Oh, saints of God, my dears, my brothers, my sisters, you just don't know how glad I am this morning. He brought me out of darkness into this marvelous light. Look where he brought me from. Our devotional reading, oh, hallelujah, will come from Psalm 91, verses 14 through 16. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Amen. <clears throat> Today I'd like to share three powerful universal principles taught by Father Hurley and many others of a spiritual persuasion. Number one, to speak is to create. Number two, we believe in mental telepathy and thought force. Number three, we believe that thoughts are spirit, and to think of a thing is the prophecy of its fulfillment. Our subject today is manifestation and creation still work. Manifestation and creation still work. The modern world is going through an unprecedented ordeal. Even the calmest among us have the natural fear and uncertainty of the situation gnawing away at their unconscious mind. My brief message this morning is simple. Don't let the stress of the times cause you to say destructive words or think destructive thoughts. Why? Because manifestation and creation still work. This unprecedented time may turn out to be one of the best times for creating in our collective lifetimes. What excuse do most of us have now? Most of us have more time, available time than ever before. Why not think on your plans, your goals, reassess your entire life? Yes, even amid death, sickness, and pestilence, the fact is that the vast majority of us will live to see the other side of this global pandemic. There will be trauma, pain, and grief lingering, to be sure. 
but we can't ever forget that manifestation and creation still work. We will close with a quick review of the principles mentioned a few moments ago. Number one, to speak is to create. Yes, what we say matters. What we say matters. Our words matter. There's an old saying, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. But we all know that's a lie. Now, the saying, I get the, the principle behind the saying that no matter what mean or negative thing someone says about us, we should do and try our best to rise to the occasion and get past it and still meet our goals and still do what we have to do. But it's a difficult thing when, when negative words are spoken against you. I think we all can understand that. But we also have to understand that the negative words we speak against ourselves, the negative words we speak against others, the negative words that come out of our mouths in a general way, in whatever way, is wrong. To speak is to create. Every word that comes out your mouth, it is creating something. So don't let this time, this, this time of crisis, this global pandemic, this virus, don't let it get in your mind so much to where you are allowing a lot of negative things to spew out of your mouth during this time. Because if you allow that when this pandemic has passed by, then you're going to find yourself in a heap of trouble and you're going to find yourself being more negative than you ever were before this happened. Some of that will be the, the trauma, pain, and grief. Yes. But it also will be because too many of us, I'm including myself in the us, are speaking too many negative words. We've got to turn this thing around. We have to start speaking life. We have to start speaking positivity. We have to start speaking facts and speaking hope and speaking love and speaking joy and speaking happiness. We have to keep going. We have to keep working. To speak is to create. Number two, we believe in mental telepathy and thought force. Number two and number three are from the what we believe in statements of the Universal Hager Spiritual Church. We believe in mental telepathy and thought force. Mental telepathy is when we can send a thought from one person to another. Now, science will, will tell us that that is not so. But I have seen evidence of mental telepathy in my life. I'll give you a very personal, uh, emotional example uh, as most of you know who are listening to this, my father passed away on, on December 14th, 2019. And on November 21st, I told this story in the eulogy, my eulogy, which I have not posted online yet. So most of you are hearing this for the first time. So on November 21st, 2019, uh, I was dealing with some financial issues at that particular time. So it was in the morning and I, I prayed and I prayed and I prayed about the financial difficulties I was facing and my family was facing. Then I sat down at my altar to meditate, hoping and desiring that the Holy Spirit would come to me, to my mind and show me what to do in regards to the finances. But when literally when I sat down, the first thing I heard was, your dad, call your dad. I heard a voice in my right ear, just as plain. Yeah, glory, that is mental telepathy. And I, I kept hearing it, call your dad. Then I saw my father, I saw like the, the profile, like the left side of his face. And it appeared as if he was laying down. But I couldn't tell if he was in a bed on the floor or what. I could just tell he was laying down and I wasn't sure what was going on? And nothing else came to me in that meditation. Nothing about the money I had just been praying about. So when I stood up, because my father, he was living in California at that time, and I live in Chicago, so it's a two-hour uh, difference in time. They're two hours behind. So I said to myself, once I got up from my meditation, well, I'll call a little later in the day when I figure he's up. As soon as I stood up, <clears throat> the phone rang and his wife <clears throat> was calling in 
when I saw her name on my phone, I literally jumped back because the manifestation, yes sir, hallelujah, was so real and so quick that it, it, it it's kind of scared me to in a way, if that makes sense to you. So then I answered the phone and, and she went on to tell me that my father had fallen while she was out and that she had to call the ambulance and he had to go to the hospital, but that he'd be coming back home that night and that she would, and she asked me to please call back the next day you know, to talk with him. And after that, he just went downhill and went back on the second hospice and never came out of it. Amen. But I did talk to him that next day, November 22nd. That was the last time that he and I talked. But as I talked to his wonderful wife, Sharon, as we talked over the, those intervening weeks from then to when he passed, and even after the fact, I started getting more pieces of information that showed me just how real the mental telepathy was. What I came to realize once I put all the pieces together and got all the information was that literally when I was sitting there at my altar in my bedroom in Chicago, Illinois, that my father, he was laying on the floor over in Southern California. How did I know that? How did I see that so plainly? Because the spirit is real. The spiritual doctrine is real. Manifestation and creation still work. Amen. We believe in mental telepathy and thought force. And when Sharon got back to the house and saw he was on the floor and she couldn't, she couldn't get him up off the floor and she knew she had to call the ambulance, my father said to her, have you talked to my son? And she said, no, I haven't talked to him. And he asked her, that, please don't tell him what's going on because I don't want to worry him. And she said to him, no, Richard, I have to tell him what's going on. And he said, okay, but I don't want George to worry. But as he was laying on the floor, obviously somewhere as he was laying there and couldn't get up, and I'm sure that was a stressful you know, experience to to fall and you really can't get up, literally cannot get up. And he had knew he had to lay there until his wife got back to the house. But he was thinking about me. The thought force was so strong in his mind that it reached all the way through the air. Hallelujah. It flew through the metraculous air and came into my mind. And I heard the voice and I saw the vision and I picked up that something was going on with my father. Hallelujah. This stuff, it still works. Amen. I don't care that we're having a pandemic. That most things that are the restaurants, you can't go in the restaurants, you, uh, the bars are closed, the schools are closed, the casinos are closed. I don't care what's going on. Manifestation and creation still works. Mental telepathy still works. Thought force is still real. And if we would think positive thoughts, if we would think good thoughts, if we would think uplifting thoughts, even in the midst of all these things going on, we can create a great life for ourselves that when this is over and we can all go back to school and go back to our jobs as usual. Ha, ah, yes, sir. Thank you, kind spirit. We won't have to go back to business as usual. We can have a better life. We can have a better time. We can have a better business. Hallelujah. Uh, so many of us, I, me included, we keep saying, I want to go back to normal. But maybe God is trying to tell the world that normal wasn't good enough. And once the world gets through going through all this pain and, and woe and misery, <coughs> amen, <coughs> maybe not all of us, not most of us, but some of us, I do believe, will realize that the life we were living before this thing started really wasn't the best. And that we can do better. And we can be better. And we can have better. Oh, I was just thinking that this morning. Uh, as I was laying in the bed. I, I couldn't sleep last night. I kept waking up, waking up, waking up. I woke up at 1 a.m., 4 a.m., 5 a.m., 6.30 a.m. Woke up again a little after 7 when the three daughters came in the room and wanted to talk. Amen. I kept waking up. Why? Because I realized that 
manifestation and creation still works. Number three, we believe that thoughts are spirit. And to think of a thing is a prophecy of its fulfillment. Thoughts, the thoughts we think. Every thought we think is a spirit. The thoughts we think are real and tangible. Yes, sir. And they can go from one person to the other. They can go from the television screen to our minds. They can go from the YouTube channel to our ears. And those thoughts, those spirits, the things I'm telling you, I am creating spirits right now with the words I'm speaking. And you are receiving spirits right now as you listen uh, to my voice. The question is, what will you do with these good spirits that I'm sending out this morning? What will you do with them? Will you let them go in one ear out the other? Will you just click and end the video and say whatever? Or will you start to think? Go over to the, uh, if you're able to go out, go over to the office supply store or, or one of the other Walmart or Walgreens or CVS or something or other. Get your notebook. Start journaling. Figure out what you want to do with your life. You can rebuild your life right now in the midst of all this going on. We believe that we believe that thoughts are spirit, and to think of a thing is the prophecy of its fulfillment. Now, just because you think a thing doesn't mean it's going to is guaranteed to happen, but it's the prophecy. The way I what I think when I think a thing, what I'm saying is I want this to happen. That's what I'm saying. When I think something that I'm saying, I want this to happen. I am looking for this to happen. Hallelujah. Amen. When I think of a thing, I am predicting the future that the thing or things that I'm thinking will manifest themselves. So now look at the stuff you're thinking about. Do you really want the things in your head right now to manifest? Some of us, some of the things, yes. But I can admit personally, some of the things I've been thinking lately, I don't want any of that stuff to happen. It has been negative things running through my mind. But Father Hurley said, told us, he said, if you don't want something to happen, don't think about it. So why are we up here thinking about things that we don't want to happen? We got to move all doubt, all fear, all uncertainty out of our minds. I know it can be difficult, especially with this global pandemic we're in the midst of. But oh, if we can do it even just for five or 10 minutes, 15, 20 minutes while we meditate, we can get some quiet time and write in our journals and write some notes and try to get some of the thoughts out of our minds of what we want to do. And not just in the future, but even in the midst of what's going on. Get a plan. Get, get everything in order. Amen. Take advantage of whatever free time you can muster. Get yourself organized. Get your household organized. Get the children organized with their e-learning and homeschooling. We as a human race can emerge from this crisis stronger than ever. You and I can emerge from this crisis stronger than ever. I hope you receive something good. I see, ah, yes, sir, I sent out a many good spirits in this recording. I hope you get catch at least a few of them and make something work. And I'm sure the spirit will give me some more thoughts on these things when we meet again next week. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Amen.